the Chainlink platform is a collection of services built on the Chainlink standards. The services are really the expression of the standards in a usable way where developers can combine the different services for data, connectivity, identity, to build next generation advanced smart contracts like DeFi, tokenized funds, verifiable stable coins, and, and a number of other great use cases. And then all those great use cases work together to create the next generation system of blockchain-based transactions, which is growing into the, the new version of the global financial system. Right? So you have the, the new global financial system, you have the use cases interacting with each other, so a stable coin that's verifiably proving its reserves and therefore highly secure. It's proving its reserves by using the proof of reserves service from the Chainlink platform. The proof of reserves service is built on the Chainlink data standard. That highly verifiable, reliable stable coin that everyone is, is now willing to accept because it's proven what it's backed by is received by the counterparty. The counterparty then generates a tokenized fund that tokenized fund requires net asset valuation data in order to be issued. That comes from a net asset valuation oracle that is a service in the Chainlink platform that is built also on the Chainlink data standard. That tokenized fund is then generated from the decentralized transfer agency contract, which accepts the data. That's built on the Chainlink compute standard um, on CRE. Then the stable coin is sent from the chain where it was issued or where the client holds it to the chain where the tokenized fund is. That's a cross-chain transaction. That cross-chain transaction is built on CCIP, the cross-chain interoperability protocol. That cross-chain transaction then triggers a delivery versus payments contract, which is what's gonna exchange the asset for the payment. That contract receives the stable coin payment it then exchanges it for the asset. That is uh, operating on chain and partly on the Chainlink runtime environment, which is the compute standard. The Chainlink runtime environment is essentially part of the Chainlink platform as a service, and then it runs on the Chainlink compute standards. Then you need to prove identity in order for this transaction to conclude. That happens through the cross-chain ID, the CCID and the uh, on-chain policy manager. The CCID is a collection of identities put on chain into a single portable identity. That is built both on the compute standard and on the CCIP cross-chain standard because it's a cross-chain identity. Then you have the policy manager. The policy manager checks that the identity meets the requirements of the transaction, basically. That is built partly on chain partly using the CRE, the Chainlink runtime environment, and the Chainlink runtime environment is built on the compute standards. And so now you have generated a reliable stable coin, you have sent it across chain, you have generated a tokenized fund, you have proven things about the tokenized fund uh, issuer and owner, and you've proven things about the stable coin issuer and owner, and you've now finally sent the tokenized fund back, and you've done the delivery part of the delivery versus payments like. And all of this was able to happen because you have a set of standards that are then implemented into actual infrastructure services in the form of the Chainlink platform. And then there are also other teams generating various services on top of these standards. Teams like, teams like Space and Time, the Swapper team for XSwap and the MasterCard integration. So the standards are something that multiple infrastructure teams and, and services are generated on. They are then used by the folks that build the use cases. These standards, multiple standards need to be used, multiple services need to be used to make the use cases work. And then those use cases working in this more advanced form of transaction where you're doing delivery versus payment in a compliant way across multiple chains is what the next generation of this industry is about. And what it needs to be about in order for it to become the next generation of the global financial system which is what mainstream adoption looks like, right? So we could be saying, we want our industry to become the next generation of the global financial system, or we could say we want mainstream adoption. For me, it's the same thing. And the current financial system has standards and they have services and infrastructures that are powered by those standards to allow transactions to work in the traditional financial system way. DeFi has begun to 
massively adopt the Chainlink standards and already Chainlink powers the majority of DeFi. And so now the next stage is to get those standards to work for the TradFi community and allow them to transition into using those standards for this next generation of the financial system that's built on a set of standards with a corresponding set of services. That is what's gonna widely be known as the Chainlink platform. And then inside of the Chainlink platform, you'll have many different teams building highly reliable services on those standards. And that'll be how you get to the new global financial system run by DeFi, real world asset issuers, institutions on chain, and all of them interacting in this next generation version of the financial system powered by our industry, which is what Chainlink is really about.